This video is going to be a film study look at Marcus Williams' performance in the Ravens' first seven games. Of course, he didn't play a single snap on defense last week in the loss on the road against the Browns. I'll talk about that decision and, and some of the impact there, therein. Regardless of, of our opinion, each of us, whether who, who's at fault, which rumor we believe, a healthy Marcus Williams getting the salary he's being paid needs to be on the field, in my opinion. He's, not, he's clearly not had much impact in 2024. Let's get that out of the way. I think that's obvious if you look at the stats. Two passes defensed, one fumble recovery against Dallas, 25 tackles in seven games. Played zero snaps, played last week against the Browns. What was said, did he violate team rules unwritten? Are there things that should have been handled behind closed doors that he brought out to the public? I don't know. A part of me doesn't care. There is an, uh, and I don't know what percentage of my opinion is, of my brain is thinking this, but thinks, hey, we're going up against a quarterback before we play the Browns with a propensity to throw interceptions. James Winston has 99 career interceptions. 3.4% of his career throws are interceptions. And maybe we should put the guy on the field who has 20 career INTs with Marlon and Nate Wiggins out. So it better have been, A, either Marcus Williams' choice to not play, or B, something more egregious than what I read and heard was said to the public. Some perspective on Jameis Winston's career interception rate, how far out of line that is with the rest of the league. I went and searched up 12 quarterbacks' names, active quarterback names, for anyone with an, a career interception rate above 3%. I could not find one. Baker Mayfield, Gardner Minshew, Jalen Hurts, among others, I was able to to go look and, and confirm really quickly that that 3.4% is a huge outlier. Further perspective on that. Right now in 2024 alone, Patrick Mahomes leads the NFL with nine interceptions in seven games. His interception percentage for this year, which is clearly an anomaly for his performance and his efficiency and statistical output, his interception percentage this year, nine picks in seven games, 3.6%. Maybe it's possible we should have we could have handled it a little better from a Marcus Williams standpoint, whatever the issue was, coaching staff point, coaching staff standpoint, whatever their issue was. It's unfortunate because now we go into a situation against the Broncos at home where we've got D tackle health issues and Lamar Jackson hasn't practiced the last two days. I'm going to go over the film here and talk about his role in a, in a handful of plays. I will be pausing uh, between plays for some additional commentary about either that about either that particular play or his overall play on the season so far. Try to spot shadow him pre-snap. This is a coverage we've been playing a lot of this year. Drop cover three. So on the snap out of empty, we're getting Roquan pushing out to the flats, or excuse me, to the hook to curl to the left, and then Marcus Williams dropping down hook to curl to the right. Flat defender, flat defender, cover three, cover three, and then middle of the field free safety. I think that's Kyle Hamilton. We're playing this a lot in the last two or three weeks. And this happens to be a a nice hit by Marcus Marcus Williams, excuse me, against uh, Godwin before he got hurt, clearly. I call it a drop cover three. We're disguising it or trying to, meaning we're we're not showing it pre-snap. Even though it's empty, we know it's pass. The Bucs, they know that we know it's passed, pass. But we've got to retain for as long as we want the ability to disguise it. I think that there needs to be some possible alterations with that type of mentality because so many of these throws are in areas that a player is, quote, responsible for, but they're just not there yet. And these quarterbacks, at least the last two weeks, Baker Mayfield, Jameis Winston, guys who've who've thrown a lot of interceptions in their career, had problems with turnovers, they're able to quickly ascertain the coverage get the ball out fast such that it's already caught before our guys can get there. You see from that particular play that Marcus Williams is assigned to the right hash, hook to curl. Roquan Smith assigned to the left hash, hook to curl. Who's responsible for the low hole in between them? Nobody. It's kind of a no cover zone that you respond to or you recover to. In that case, it's a short gain for six yards on a second and nine or second and eight. So you kind of live to play another day. I do think he's playing a lot of responsibilities he being Marcus Williams. Is he better suited to be a middle-of-the-field free safety? I think that's obvious. His 20 career interceptions, especially prior to coming over to Baltimore, many of them were on middle-of-the-field free safety plays. Nonetheless, he has played well at times as a half-field coverage element. This is a third and nine. 
against the Chiefs in week one. You're going to get Rasheed Rice kind of sitting down here. Juju bringing his route to the corner, and we're in straight man down here to the bottom. So Brandon Stevens is man on one. You can see Mahomes getting rid of the ball quick. Just a little route underneath to hold our second level coverage. Juju's going to get the ball thrown to him in his hands, but it has to be high because Mahomes has to throw it over our Darius Washington, who did retain some depth. I think it's a nice break on the ball by Marcus Williams. Is he one uh, five one thousandths of a second later than I'd like? I feel like he is, yeah, but it's a great challenge on the play. It goes down as an incompletion. Can Juju catch that football? Sure, he can absolutely catch the ball, but I think that we have to give credit for Mark. Credit to Marcus Williams where it's due on certain plays. It's fashionable at this point to criticize him, whether it's pro Ravens coaching staff slash front office people, or on the other end of this perspective, people who are very harsh on our front office and our coaching staff, but nonetheless uh, don't think that Marcus Williams was worth the money when we signed him. I do want to uh, point out that when he played last year with a significant injury, I think that says a lot about his character. It, it surprises me a little bit that we couldn't come to some type of resolution last week between Marcus Williams and the staff in order to how to, how to get him on the field. I have no idea what the we'll, – we'll find out eventually, I'm sure. Word will come out. There's been so many rumors. I choose not to believe any of them until we get some kind of confirmation or some kind of resolution and get him back on the field. It's got to pretty much be this week, in my opinion. One thing that we've done really well since 2022 is play this funnel coverage to Twins. So this is a third and two against Dallas. Marcus Williams obviously back here as a half field safety. And he's not involved in the play here from the standpoint of coverage nor target. In fact, Kyle Hamilton is the breakdown here up to the top. This is one of the two completions he gave up to uh, Lepke, Lemke, the fullback. This is our funnel coverage. So Stevens is outside leverage. I think it's Ardarius is inside leverage. And they're funneling or pushing him to the safety. In this case, it's Marcus Williams. Sometimes we'll play this coverage on one side of the field, like down here, and the other side, we play a totally different coverage. It also could be route release. It's a, a missed tackle by Kyle Hamilton on a third and two. Very unfortunate play uh, from a Kyle Hamilton standpoint because there's been so many good reps of his this year. I love this coverage to twins with Marcus Williams. It provides or gives the quarterback some real danger in throwing the football to either one of these two guys. If you presumably, if you were to get you know, an out, an out breaking route and an in breaking route. These two guys are going to pass that off. And then Marcus Williams is going to have to decide who to help on it. Would probably, it would probably just be the deeper route, normally the second break in that particular coverage. That's how I understand it. But there's multiple ways to play it. Uh, people with a higher level of understanding of football than I do could perhaps explain it better. Same coverage against the Bengals, funnel coverage to twins. You do have the running back on the side, it's a first and 10. This is late in the fourth quarter. It's going to be Matabike's sack, where he's stunting across, grabs Burrow pretty violently, I thought. When I watched this live, I thought this could be a face mask. It was not. But you can see the leverage that we've got. Inside leverage here of the slot, the number two receiver. Outside leverage here, Brandon Stevens, funneling everything to Marcus Williams. People just aren't throwing the ball there. Why would you? Why would you throw the ball deep with Marcus Williams, a guy who's known as a ball hawk, I think you're making a good tactical decision by going somewhere else when you see that coverage alignment post-snap to the field where there's twins receivers. They, the offenses in the NFL, understand when and where we play that coverage, I think. And so they probably recognize pre-snap, hey, we want to avoid him in this situation as much as possible. And that gets back to my point about the Browns game. It When it comes out, whatever the the final truth is in terms of why he didn't play, it better be something, in my opinion, that pretty damning for, for us to keep a guy off the field who has great hands, and now when you go back and you look at the film and you see how many times we dropped interceptions against that Browns team, um, it's easy to sit here and be Monday morning or Thursday afternoon quarterback and say, I think Marcus Williams catches some of those footballs, but I will offer that perspective. I think Marcus Williams might catch a couple of those footballs. Getting away from the funnel coverage here, this is obviously against the Raiders. Big sack by Owe and Pierce, a split sack. Kind of still looks like funnel coverage, but we're settling the flats here, Brandon Stevens. And then you're getting a vertical by Devontae Adams that Kyle Hamilton tells you how brilliant and talented 
Kyle Hamilton is physically, that he's able to match this route. Even on many of these plays that end up being positive for the Ravens and, and display post-snap communication, Eddie Jackson is trying to get on the same page with Marlon Humphrey and I believe Trenton Simpson. There's still some things to nitpick about. Eddie Jackson and Marlon Humphrey, right before the snap, were still trying to get something straight. It didn't look like Eddie Jackson was happy with it, number one. Number two, based upon the release, meaning no one pressing vertical, Eddie Jackson is pointing. So I think what he's telling Marcus Williams is, I got you on anything that's cutting the first crosser, the first post. So if you were to get you know, a climb concept and then a second post, then Eddie Jackson saying, I'll take this one. Kind of wish we had this in against the touchdown for Jamar Chase, and I'm going to show you in a moment. Keep this coverage in mind. But having said all of that, we still end up with Hamilton underneath of Devontae Adams and Eddie Jackson covering that, and no one on the dig. We're just fortunate that we got a sack, a win by Owe here. Pierce involved as well. And certainly Roquan is possibly underneath of that dig, depending on when the timing of it is to be thrown. My point is saying that even when we have opportunity, even when we have opportunities to talk about good coverage, things that we did well, there's still opportunities to to I think be a little bit better, maybe two percent better, three percent better, something like that. It is rare to see us communicating pre-snap and post-snap, so that's a good thing. This is third quarter against the Bengals. Marcus Williams, in case, in case you don't know, is almost always on the right. In this case, he's on the left, and that's interesting here. I do think he may be too focused on the quarterback's eyes at times. This is, of course, we're doubling Chase here with Eddie Jackson and Brandon Stevens. I think Brandon Stevens is essentially playing trail technique. Big completion to Io Civis down here. Marcus Williams is the first guy to respond. This is a huge loss by Nate Wiggins. I mean, you can't get beat by that much against Io Civis, who's a good football player, but he's not a speed burner in my opinion, particularly when it's third and 10 for me. But having said all that, look at the width of Eddie Jackson while doubling Jamar Chase. I'm not saying that Marcus Williams has to be down here outside of the 20. What I am saying is this is not your job to this side. Nothing up here is your job. I'm speculating here that from a pre-snap decision-making standpoint defensively, as a staff, we would say if we're going to lose a one-on-one, we want to lose this one. T. Higgins against Marlon Humphrey. Now, it's also possible that they had a different answer, which was we'll double here. And Marcus, we want you involved to help here. And this is the one-on-one that's entirely possible here. And it's quite likely that that, that should be the, the accurate interpretation. I wonder if Marcus Williams doesn't need to be more flat in a backpedal, not committing more to this side, just because that's where Joe Burrow looked first. I think we've got that side of the field covered, but it's it's also possible that we were willing to live with the one-on-one. In this case, it was a big one, third and 10, already down 17 to 10. And Joe Burrow is able to get a huge conversion, almost 40 yards. Now, in terms of the the pass rush, which has been talked about a lot, look, there's work being done by some of our guys. I don't think this is all on the pass rush. I think there's more to uh, talk about and discuss with our coverage schemes and the tactical choices we're willing to make at times. This is a nice win by Ngakwe. He's been close or been there often in the past two or three weeks. Burrow got to throw off quick. He made a quick decision. Again, I suspect that quarterbacks understand how reactive we are in the secondary and Roquan Smith to um, to where the quarterback looks first. And so as Burrow's in his drop here, he's holding his left – don't be deceived. He's holding his left shoulder here while his face mask is trying to look here. He's trying to hold, I think, Marcus Williams as long as possible to come back to Io Civis because he recognized, I think, that it's quite likely that Jamar Chase was going to get doubled and possibly so was T. Higgins. Think about that coverage from a couple of plays ago that I displayed to you where Eddie Jackson pointed post-snap to Marcus Williams and I'm sure said something trying to get him to hear it, that he was there to help with the first deep crosser and Marcus Williams could handle the the second one, the outside post. If there was one, it didn't necessarily develop on that play. And then now reflect back on this coverage call where Jamar Chase gets a touchdown. Jamar Chase does put a move on Marcus Williams here that kind of forces Marcus Williams to open this way. You've got Io Civis here. Jamar Chase gets to about this area, puts a little move on, 
and then takes it to the pylon. I still think that one of these guys down here should be handling this better. Certainly on uh, with 15 seconds left in the half, there is no way you allow yourself to get beat deep. I do want to go back to something that I put um, on film in a, in a video that I produced Wednesday afternoon, and that's about collisioning receivers. Now, there is a rule in the NFL about how far down the field you can collision and you can make contact. I understand that. I don't care about that rule. I will be honest with you. I do not care. Up until the point that they start calling it on us consistently, I would be comfortable if Roquan tries to pinball Iosivis and Chase, who are stacked almost together and essentially running in the same lane. I like collisioning receivers. I know it's the NFL and the rules are different. We could set a more physical tone with some of these guys, particularly with so little time left in the half. I think our perspective on being physical with receivers is wrong, regardless of what Marcus Williams does here. And I do think that he needs to continue to get depth and not overcommit so early to what is a slight move to Jamar, by Jamar Chase in this area. One of these two guys should not be there. Probably Marlon Humphrey is my guess, but it's also possible that Eddie Jackson should have and could have played it the same way he tried to play it on that snap against the Raiders. If you recall pre-snap, him and Marlon Humphrey were communicating. Even though we didn't see Marlon move, Eddie Jackson was the guy gesticulating. And then post-snap, he pointed this way and, in fact, rolled that way to take the first crosser. He does end up on him. We've got two guys here. Eddie Jackson won, potentially Marlon Humphrey responsible for deep third. Whatever it is, quarter, quarter, half, cover three, it's a bad version of it, number one. Number two, I do think that Marcus Williams is a guy who reacts to the quarterbacks a lot, number one, and therefore ends up seeing the routes late. And so why do I bring that up? Because you tend, in my opinion, you tend to go for fakes with a, a larger degree of reaction, maybe, me, meaning opening your hips sooner or overreacting if your eyes have been on the quarterback for a longer period of time. I think there's something to be said about the middle of the field free safety, having his eyes on the quarterback initially. Great. All for that. Cosigned. As a half field safety, I think you've got to be reading routes, and I think you've got to be reacting to routes and understanding route concepts. And in my opinion, we are way too focused on reading the quarterback, watching the quarterback almost exclusively to the exclusion, I should say, of reacting to routes at all. And I do think if I was to complain about anything for Marcus Williams, that would be my main complaint. Does, it, does he look agile, quick? I can't say that. There are times I think it's part of his eyes looking at the quarterback so much that makes him slower to the route because he hasn't seen it or picked it up until late. Hopefully I explained that in a way that makes sense. You're more than welcome to, to disagree with me. Along with, has he been agile? Has he been hostile? Haven't seen that. Rarely. That one tackle I showed you on the first play, another tackle I think maybe week three against the Raiders. Other than that, not much. He almost reminds me of Geno Stone in the way that he's lining up with a lot of depth and the way that he's reacting to run concepts. So there might be something systemically with what we're running as a system this year that's similar to last year, whereby we have a player who's not involved with the run fit very often, Marcus Williams this year, Geno Stone last year, and also is lining up with a significant amount of depth trying to respond to where the quarterback throws the football. It kind of fits, if you ask me. I, basically, I got that idea from a comment on my YouTube channel about a week ago. A blown coverage where I think we're trying to run some type of perhaps Tampa 2, but even within that, we've got two weird reactions here. So... I think this illustrate this either illustrates that Marcus Williams reacts to the quarterback's eyes so much, or post snap Roquan's supposed to be hooked to curl, and Marcus Williams is going to run in the middle of the field. Kyle Hamilton at this point we know should be a half field safety post snap because Marlon Humphrey settles in the flats. This is of course Xavier Worthy's second touchdown, clean release. We know that Kyle Hamilton should be lining up deeper as a half field safety. Eddie Jackson's here. Watch the slight little communication between Marcus Williams. He's pointing to Roquan. It's almost like he's pointing, hey, what are you doing over here? And, and again, I think this kind of belabors the point, I know, so my apologies for that. We are so focused on the quarterback, I wonder if we are 
out of our zone at times as second level defenders. I'm not saying that that's necessarily what happens here with Kyle Hamilton. I firmly believe that he knows he should be a half field safety. In fact, I think he had a quote um, in a press conference after the game, kind of admitting that. I think one of these guys is supposed to be lined, is supposed to be in this area here, and the other one is supposed to be running the pipe between the hashes deep in what could end up looking like a Tampa two. Essentially, what I'm trying to provide to you there is, yes, we had a coverage mistake by Kyle Hamilton. We may have had a second coverage mistake on the same snap on the other side with Roquan slash Marcus Williams or both. And that's the thing that's scary. You can look at a lot of these coverages, and you can say there's multiple breakdowns on the same play, not just one guy. And when I, so I, when I led with saying I don't think these problems start or end with Marcus Williams, that's why, I'm, that's why I indicated that. That's why I provided that up front. I, re I recognize that people probably disagreed with it and have their own opinions. Marcus Williams is sorry. He's slow. He's not fast anymore. He's 20 years old with 20 career interceptions. And at this point, didn't play a snap last week. That's not sustainable. There's, I think, a 7.2 or 7.3% of, of, of our salary cap is dedicated, dedicated to Marcus Williams. I think he's got to be on the field, especially in a game where Marlon Humphrey – and Nate Wiggins don't play at all. We're in a lot of trouble this week uh, if Lamar Jackson actually does have a health issue. I don't know as I record this video what the status of that is. I, I do know that it's been reported he didn't uh, participate in practice for the second day in a row. And we've got defensive tackle health issues as well from the standpoint of Pierce being on IR. I thought Travis Jones looked looked like he was possibly playing hurt this week, this past week. And, of course, I think he did show up on the on the injury report with an ankle and Broderick Washington as well. Another example of talking about reacting to uh, the quarterback, a little slight shoulder fake here by Dak Prescott in what I think is going to turn into a cover three. And again, we're disguising things so much that Marcus Williams is at the wrong angle. Now, do I think that Marcus Williams is reacting, perhaps overreacting to this little slight shoulder fake that Prescott gives? Yes, I do. But the fact that he lined up down here and had to roll to free safety. Yeah, we've done that hundreds of times in the last two years. It seems like teams are taking advantage of this a little bit more often. So let me run that back a couple of times so you can see what I'm talking about with Dak Prescott. I mean, it's not even really a shoulder fake, but it definitely gets Roquan to level off and flatten out here. You can see these four underneath droppers, cover three, middle of the field free safety, cover three, third responsibility, I should say, it's a first quarter pass on like a third and four, third and five, something like that. I think that we need to get get more to our spot earlier, meaning move pre-snap, even to even at risk of providing the quarterback more pre-snap intel than he already has. I think quarterbacks recognize the looks they're getting from us almost immediately post-snap. I don't know what the difference would be if we moved a little bit more before the snap to actually get our guys in the position we want them to be in. A lot of, I probably omitted 16 or 18 plays like this one, whereby Marcus Williams is in the middle of the field and either through the quarterback looking him off one side and coming back to the other, or him just not being sure which route to react to, he just doesn't play a role in it. I'm not faulting him that. I'm just describing the pattern to you in a manner that, illustrates he's not being targeted and and he's not being involved. I guess the other way you could say is I guess the other way you could say it is you'd like for him to to be involved. You'd like them to be assigned to certain areas such that we dissuade the quarterback from throwing the football there. Yes, I absolutely agree. Oftentimes we are playing our backside coverage to a trip set as if we have a shutdown corner on the field. We don't. And I like Brandon Stevens. I appreciate the, the career that he's had with the Ravens. I hope that after this video, he absolutely proves me wrong. He's just not a shutdown corner. He's not. We play coverages against three-by-one formations, trips or bunch, as if our backside corner, particularly to our right, the offense's left, is going to take away your best receiver one-on-one, -on -one, and he's just not going to. So I want to use this play, this 
controversial uh, pass interference against Brandon Stevens as an example of that. It's third and 17, and Gardner Minshew is just throwing this football up. That's literally all that's happening here. But talk a little bit about how the Ravens are trying to play this to the trip side. So third and seven, third and goal from the 17. Look at the depth that Roquan has. Here's the backside safety. Oftentimes, if you get a, a vertical or something of a climb nature from the trips, the backside safety is going to have to help with that. And the Ravens, sure enough, with Roquan, the combination of Roquan and Marcus Williams are doing just that. You can't double every, everybody. We're playing man here. You can't double this guy at, at, at risk of leaving Roquan one-on-one with a tight end who could be a problem for him from a matchup standpoint. However, I also think that there comes a time where we have to recognize that the coverage we're playing to the backside of trips, at least when Brandon Stevens is covering the backside X, it's being exploited. It is, I think, in big moments. And so there should be times, could be times, where Marcus Williams is helping out to that side especially on third and goal from the 17. I really don't give a damn if they if they gain 13, 14, 15 yards. If they gain 16 and they got fourth and goal from the one, that's a different story. But in my opinion, we could look at playing some different coverages to trips. That seems to be one of the main issues, in my opinion, with this defense is matching up and defending trips effectively without giving up big plays consistently. Another example here of Marcus Williams lining up as a half field safety and then jumping a route by number three on the other side. This is an incomplete pass. We're up, I think we're up 26 to 12, 28 to 12, excuse me, against the Cowboys here. We're bringing heavy pressure, stick split zero, essentially. And you can see that Pierce is dropping out. Marcus Williams is jumping it, very similar to the first play that I showed you against uh, the Bucks, except this is not cover three. This is. Stick splits zero, and he's dropping down based upon the quarterback's eyes. I think he's really good at this because Marcus Williams and Roquan Smith, wherever the quarterback looks and starts to pull the pin on the grenade, they're going to react. And so from the standpoint of what coverages do we play well, what should we maybe play more of, even though I'm not a huge fan of stick splits zero, given the situation that we're in, that might be one of them. This is a sack by uh, Trenton Simpson and Matabike. Simpson and Roquan essentially pass off or banjo the running back. They basically release, uh, Simpson releases him to Roquan because of the type of release that the running back gets here. So he will eventually veer off, and these two guys will pass him off. Marcus Williams as the front side safety to the top side of the field. Ends up helping Kyle Hamilton down here. With a vertical, I think this is a nice job of coverage. We're beat here, obviously. If if Patrick Mahomes was able to see it and get the throw off, we're in trouble because Worthy is is a, coming across the field pretty much wide open. From the standpoint of what we do well, these are some of the examples, some of the things I'd like to see us continue. We, If we dual read the running back based upon their release, I'm a huge fan of that. I'm even a fan of having our safeties react to it at times. We did that a lot in 2023, in my opinion. I could be wrong there. Absent some things like that that we're reading that are very clear, concise, almost, I want to say, simple and easy reads, uh, this defense is really in trouble. We are having extreme difficulty matching up with routes, defending routes, and that started from week one, even though – we were able to be in the game and, and come within a, a toenail, a toe, I guess, of potentially tying the game, or, or we weren't going into overtime. We all know that. We were going for two to possibly try to win the game. I don't think Marcus Williams is the issue. Do I think he looks quick and like he's reacting smoothly and efficiently? I don't think that either. So I'm not taking sides here. I'm not taking Marcus Williams' side. I'm not taking the – the coaching staff's side, certainly, if you've watched my videos this week, I've been very critical. Do I pretend to understand intimately each s coverage snap that I showed you on film? No, there's no way. I don't know the call. Some of it is speculation, and I try to be upfront about that. Do I think that Marcus Williams could be less focused on the quarterback, particularly in a half-field safety role? 100%. He's been taught that. 
Why would him and Roquan Smith and others, Kyle Hamilton as well, be staring at the quarterback so much to the exclusion of identifying and reacting to routes at all if they hadn't been taught it? They have. And I think that would be my main complaint about where we are. I think we've been taught shortcuts and not pattern reading, which is a little surprising. Mike McDonald's split field coverages last year often relied upon pattern reads. I think one one definitive statement that I will put a stake in the ground to say is our instruction on pattern recognition and response has regressed exponentially. If we were a level 8 or 9 out of 10 last year in terms of pattern recognition and responses by our DBs, I think we're a 4 this year. Occasionally, we're solid with it. I think and it makes things more difficult for Zach Orr to be in the right call because you don't have built-in built, built in reads and responses by guys to no matter what the route is. That's the concept behind quarters or split field coverages. Be able to read the patterns, react to them, efficiently and effectively, and not give the quarterback easy throws. We've given the quarterback so many easy throws this year. Is Marcus Williams the main part of that? No, he's not. Do I think he? Do I hope he plays this week against the Broncos? Absolutely. And I'll, I'll expand upon it and hit it one more time. I think if he plays against the Browns, it's absolutely possible that he snags one or two of those interceptions that Eddie Jackson had in his hands. It is a very now – is a very interesting a decision that our coaching staff and or Marcus Williams made to not play him a single snap because we're 5-3 and three facing a Broncos team with a young quarterback who generally throws the ball well against no pressure, four-man rushes. If you look up his splits against four-man versus five-man rushes, there's a distinct difference. So we may be in a situation where we have to bring pressure. We have to bring a fifth guy in order to get pressure and get this young quarterback out of his rhythm. And in my opinion, a guy like Marcus Williams on the back end has the potential, it's out there on film, with 20 career interceptions, to flip the game, flip the field in an instant, and get it back to our offense. I don't know if you guys agree with much of my thoughts or most of them. Feel free to let me know in the comments section. This is one of the more frustrating things to look at for me, to be honest with you, because so many times Marcus Williams really isn't involved. His alignment is very conservative. Again, it reminds me of Geno Stone last year in that he was lined up so deep at times that he's essentially prohibited from being involved in any of the underneath routes that we're getting eaten up by, whether it's man or zone. I appreciate you guys' time, man. Let me know what you think of the video in the comment section. It probably went on too long, uh, especially with the lack of impact that Marcus Williams has had, the lack of involvement, which is generally due to his alignment being so deep. If you think other Ravens fans would enjoy my thoughts on Marcus Williams and, and whether he is the problem or not, then please consider grabbing a link to this video, sharing it out on social media to help this content get more reach.